Quiet on set. I think they're actually already recording. So, <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. I'm um, just waiting for that. Make sure. Okay. Hello, everybody. This is Ben McClintock here with Micah Turner from Defending It Utah, and we are here with Scott Bradley, Dr. Scott Bradley, and um, there is a, a, a huge thing going on right now with the state legislature. Uh, if you didn't know already, they are having a special session tomorrow, starting at 9 a.m. And one of the bills so far that we've been able to look through, it's this stuff isn't been on the been up to be able to really look at much, uh, but we wanted to share it with you. You need to contact your legislators right now. Get their cell phones, call them up. It's 11 o'clock at night. They're, they're dirt bags if they want to vote for this. And I'll, I'll tell you why. No. Send them text messages too. <laughs> call them and you send them a text. It's HB 309, Timothy Hawks and Jacob Andereg. This guy, uh, he's got so many horrible bills. So this is local government emergency response. I don't think you're talking right into it. Let me, well, then why are you moving it away? Isn't the symbol right there? Yeah. Okay, carry on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hope, I, I think they can hear. So what okay. this, there's a few things that this bill does. It, it makes, de it defines certain things and it gives new powers to local um, mayors of cities as well as to um, county mayors if, you're, if you have an executive in your county. And it gives them insane new powers. And we brought on Scott Bradley to, because, you know, everybody loves Scott. He's a constitutional expert and he can tell us, you know, are we interpreting this correctly? And so we go to lines uh, 97 and this bill, this is the definition part of the bill. And it talks about local order of constraint and what that means. And so it says it. It means an order, rule, or regulation issued in response to a declared emergency that applies for a municipality, and chime anytime you want to, Scott, for a county, countywide, applies for all or substantially all individuals or a certain class of individuals or public places or a certain class of public places, and for the protection of the public health and in response to the declared emergency, establishes, maintains, and enforces isolation or quarantine, establishes, maintains, or enforces a stay-at-home order, exercises physical control over property and or individuals. This right here is the major part. I mean, all this and, is horrible. And and over individuals. And property. over individuals. Ex exercises physical control over you and your property. Not just your yeah. not just your home, but your your property. It's just a very broad term. Your and, vehicle. And your person. And your person, right? And your family. They literally have license to do anything to you. Yeah. You're far away from the mic, there, <laughs> uh, Enoch. And there, there is only, uh, there's only two things in the universe. There's individuals and then there's property. <laughs> so this is, uh, yeah. It's attacking everything and gives them mm. unilateral control for 14 days. They declare this emergency. They have 14 days. This They can do whatever they want to you or your property. They can do anything they want to you or your property for 14 days. And at the end of the 14 days, then the city council or the county council can get together and say, oh, we want to extend it for another 14 days indefinitely. Yeah. Scott? You know, it's, this is diabolical and it's, I mean, and that sounds like an overstatement perhaps. I mean, maybe it sounds theatrical, but, but truly if, if people would get their constitution out, and, and read through Article 1, for example, about the individuals, uh, Article 1, Section 1, the right to possess, protect property, assemble peaceably, uh, to worship according to the dictates of their consciences. Uh, Article 1 of the Utah Constitution is a reiteration of the Bill of Rights, basically. Mm -hmm. but, but it's interesting to me that there's other seg segments in here that, that basically prohibit the uh, this thing uh, of you know like stopping habeas corpus habeas corpus means you've got to have a hearing to take somebody and and basically imprison them and and yeah. this this bill here says oh no 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 we can imprison them in their homes if we want right and there's no there's no due process there is no court hearing there is nothing it's just lock them down baby and I don't know how different that is. I mean, if you don't have enough jail cells, just lock them in their homes. I mean, this is so un unbelievable. And, and what it basically does is it canonizes in so many ways, it, you know, makes it 
official and doctrinal and everything else like that. <laughs> the things that have been happening unconstitutionally in the state and the nation, literally, yeah. for the last several weeks. And, and so what, what this legislative action is trying to do, when you say controlling individuals and property, now, if you read the bill itself, it talks about shutting down theaters and businesses and all these kinds of things. I mean, this thing, it violates Article 1, Section 10 of the United States Constitution, this idea of, of violating the right to contract. See, you know, I could hire one of you guys to do something. Now I can't. They're saying, no, 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 you've got to shut your business down. You can't do these things. And, and the U.S. Constitution prohibits these things. The state of Utah Constitution prohibits these things. And, and basically, the people that are holding office, these people that are going to vote tomorrow, probably on this thing. Thursday morning, oh, 9 o'clock, the session starts. They, they, they're going to vote on basically violating their, their oath of office, the United States Constitution, as well as the Utah Constitution. They're going to overreach the power. And, you know, you say, oh, well, we've got when emergencies, we've got to do certain things and everything like that. I'm turning back to Article 6, Section 30 of the Utah Constitution, and it talks about continuity of government. Now, in, a, in a exigencies of a great emergency, the government, they want to be able to keep it operational. So it gives certain powers to, you know, individuals temporarily. But it says in subsection 2, subsection 1, which is before it, just before it, does not permit these temporary public officers to act or these temporary measures to be contrary to the Constitution and applicable law. Now, for those that keep and pay attention to these kinds of things, a Constitution is superior to, it takes precedence over anything that a legislature can create. And if a legislature creates something that contradicts the Constitution, the legislative action is unconstitutional by, by definition. Right. And so if it contradicts this constitution that I have in my hand right now, the Utah constitution, and of course, I have the United States constitution in the other hand, if it contradicts those things, they're illegal, null and void. But what's going to happen in this special session, and I'm not sure exactly if it'll be at 0900 tomorrow morning, you know, on the 16th of April, or, or if they're going to hem and haw and debate and, and everything else like that, they're on the wrong path. What they're doing is trying to give color of law to what's been going on by executive order unconstitutionally in this state. And by the way, we could go in and quote chapter and verse in the Utah Constitution, how it creates three legislative bodies, executive, legislative, and judicial. And none of them are allowed ever to perform the labors of the other. So the executive cannot constitutionally create law. And he said, well, we're we're doing a regulation or creating a policy. Well, okay, so are you going to arrest somebody? And, and uh, arrest is life, liberty, and property. I mean, you maybe maybe if they resist, you shoot them and say they were res resisting arrest. It's, it's absolutely absurd to think that we are taking this to this level for something as, as non-issue as it is right now in Utah. And we're trying to give further justification for some future event to be able to do this and, and give it color of law. And, and again, if you're violating the Constitution, it is a violation of the law of the land, if you will. Yeah. So it's horrid. It's absolutely horrid. So for, for people that are just coming on, we are talking about uh, this bill, um, HB 3009, which will be voted on tomorrow in the special session of the legislature. Um, the session starts at nine o'clock and you can watch it online at le.utah.gov. But right now um, we need you to share this video all over the place. We need to light up the phones of your legislators, your senators and your house members. You can find them here at the legislative website, but this bill is absolutely egregious. This is everything. This is every 10 pot dictator's dream come true because for 14 days, Unless in perpetuity, the, um, your city council or your, um, or your uh, um, county councils can decide to perpetuate this, a, uh, an, an executive of the county or your city has the right, uh, well, pretend it right. Does, is pretend authority. Uh, his pretend authority. To violate the Constitution. To control physically 
you and your property, you and your property. You know, the closest thing I can use as an analog analogous situation to this, immediately it came to mind when, when we looked at this, was Germany, 1933. Yeah. Midsummer. I mean, we're, we're talking about this is a draconian effect. And, and what really uh, just absolutely kills me about this, if I can find it quickly, I want to give you some statistics that happen. Okay. This is analogous to the USA Patriot Act, okay? An egregious violation of the Constitution. It basically suspended the Fourth Amendment. We don't have a Fourth Amendment anymore in our Constitution because of the USA Patriot Act, which Orrin Hatch claimed to have been the principal author of. I'm not sure that he had the uh, skills to write. But, but the fact of the matter is, this is the history of this. It was introduced in the House on the 23rd of October, 2001. It was passed in the House on the 24th of October, 2001. By the way, I am one of the few people in the whole United States that read it top to bottom, side to side, and annotated and cross-referenced it and, and covered it with notes. But so it was introduced one day, passed the next by a vote of 357 to 66 against, okay? So the next day, it passed the Senate by... 98 yeas, one nay. And so the 25th of October, and on the 26th of October, 2001, George W. Bush signed it. So introduced the 23rd, it's the law of the land, quote unquote. Right. A violation and legislation, as the founding fathers called it. In three days. And, and that's kind of, it went through a cyclonic force. It just blew through there. And I am absolutely confident that unless you were involved in the authorship of that bill, there was not one senator or congressman that read it. Yeah. And again, it took me hours to read, many hours to read. Of course, I was cross-referencing and, and writing notes and everything like that. But the fact of the matter is, it was absolutely an egregious violation of so many things American. By the way, the things I did not read, I counted, it was a manual count, 214 other sections of U.S. law that were affected by it, but I didn't have time to read all of those things. So this thing that's in before the state of Utah, if it, right. it was just introduced, it just, as far as we know, came, came to, out today, as far as I know, HB today, as far as we trying to sneak it in. It's 370 yeah. words, I mean, words, let it lines, lines. Long, okay, yeah. 370 lines, which is not anywhere near to what the USA Patriot Act was, but it's a large bill. There are many ramifications to it. They're seizing control and canonizing or, or giving justification to what's been going on for the last several weeks, because I think they know they've been caught with their pants down, so to speak. And they're, they're trying to go back and cover their bets and say, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We, OK, OK, OK. We're, we've, we've corrected all of the things that you guys have pointed out that are wrong. No, they're making them even more wrong because yeah. now they're actually putting it in code that will allow them to create violations that you'll be able to be arrested, property seized, money taken, all those kinds of things. Without is, due process yeah. at all. Control of you and your property. That's what it says. Control yeah. of you and your property. Physical control. So that's the definition of, um, of what's going on here. We have the definition of uh, chief executives, a declared emergency. That's the definition of what the power of a declared emergency is. And then here in part two, it says the local order of constraint issuance process during a declared emergency. So during a declared emergency, a chief executive may issue a local order of constraint, which is what we just described what that is here, which means he is taking, stealing, usurping the authority to control you and your property without due process. And without even being a crime being committed, without a crime, without you being, being accused of a crime, He's taking control of you and your property. They're claiming they're claiming authority to nullify the Fourth Amendment as well as, as, well as um, uh, state constitutional law. They're nullifying so many things. It would take us several minutes to just list them out of the Constitution and uh, not only the Utah Constitution, the United States Constitution. And, and if they can put you under house arrest, if you will, uh, to a, in violation of habeas corpus, if they can, if they can uh, basically stop your ability to contract in, in violation of Article One, Section Ten of the United States Constitution, 
if they can do things like stop your ability to assemble or to worship or to perform any of your labors without due process. And again, the Constitution absolutely requires due process in these things. Yeah. And, and it's just happening by executive order. There's nothing in the Constitution, either of them, that says, oh, 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 ah, we suspend the Constitution if a virus comes through or somebody gets right. sick. Or if there's any, there's no, no, absolutely no authority to suspend it. The constitution. What, what enemy is better than an invisible one? Everyone who yeah. votes for this should be instantly impeached. Yeah. Everybody, yeah. So um, Enoch says that everybody that votes for this should be instantly impeached. And so we need you to share this video. You need to go to le.utah.gov, click on legislators or just hover over it. Go over to find by address if you don't know who yours is. And you just type it in here and they'll show and, and whoever your legislator is will show up and you can contact them. You need text to text them, them text them, text them, text them um, right now. Call them up, everything. Light, the, get their lines lit on fire. Um, these are the sponsors right here that are trying to push this garbage down our throats. And this, this video has got to be shared. Their lines have to be lit on fire. They need to know that you're not going to put up with this. This is... You know, we've been talking about everything they've been doing that was just way egregious and way too far. But this is just like every tin pot dictator's dream come true. And it's, it's got to be opposed right now. HB 3009 is the bill number. You go to le.utah.gov. You can find it. You can read it yourself. We've been showing you and reading you um, from this bill. Um, Enoch, you've been reading the comments. Do we have any, anything that we need to cover in the comments or? Um, no questions, just lots of support for okay. what saying. Okay, great. So, Anderegg lost his actual mind. <laughs> oh, he had to have uh, one to begin with. He knows exactly what he's doing. <laughs> I, <laughs> so, right. yeah. so I think we've covered this pretty well. Um, you Please, everybody, share this. Contact legislator Scott. Do you, I think maybe we, we've kind of covered everything we need to cover. Do you have anything else we want to, um, that you want to make sure and let people know about this bill that we haven't covered yet? No, I think that uh, the important stuff is let's not draw this out any longer than we need to. The word yeah. needs to get out, share it around, raise the warning. I mean, Paul Revere's on his horse right now, coming through Lexington and Concord. And, and you say, oh, well, that's, oh, that's, that's a little bit of an overemphasis on things. But, but this is what the committees of correspondence did. Yep. They communicated the dangers that were being worked upon the people. And we've got technology to do it right now. You don't have to get on a horse and go. But, you know, there were people that, that heard the cry. You guys have been listening to Defending Utah for however long you have. And, and it's kind of like, oh, I know their voices. I know these guys. Oh, yeah, they've got some sound advice and counsel. That was the thing that Paul Revere and the others that rode that day. They had been out communicating with the people for an extended period of time. They weren't some guy that had spent too much time in the tavern and was whooping and hollering through their city. They had a message, the people heard it, and they gathered in the, on the greens. I've stood on Lexington Green, for example, where it was hallowed by the blood of those that, that stood against the advance of tyranny. And the people awoke and let the price be paid. And, and, and that's we've got to happened. do that right now. We've got to do yep. that right now. So encourage you all to join Defending Utah. Go to defendingutah.org, click on the membership tab, join today, support these efforts, help us to be able to be the Paul, Re Paul Revere's and get the word out to more people, share this message. And we need to make the legislators know this will not be accepted. Um, until next time, I'm Ben McClintock here with Micah Turner and Scott Bradley.